Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. Last time we finished up the Rainbow Shell side quest. Um, we got some of the best equipment in the entire game. And um, now we only have one more character specific side quest left to go. And that is Robo because unfortunately Isla really doesn't have one. I mean there's code in the game for one. There's th Singing Mountain but... I guess, you know, nothing ever became of it, so... Anyway, as far as my setup is concerned, we have Magus, Frog, and Robo in the party. Sunshades, Prism Specs, Hero Metal for Frog, although he's really not going to be doing much of anything. The only reason why Frog's in the party is to learn Frog Squash, which we're going to do really soon, and hopefully we'll also learn Flare, even though I should have learned it last time, but frickin' Yakra killed me. Pain in my ass, but oh well. Robo is required for this area, that's why I haven't had him learn Shock yet, although he should hopefully learn that by the end of this dungeon as well. So anyway, let's head on inside the Genodome. Oh. Oh. Okay. At this point, Robo has to be in your party, and he has to actually be in the lead of your party as well in order to go in here. He is required. And this is a one-time-only dungeon, too. Prometheus? Yikes. Oh. Let me welcome humans? Let me come closer, and you cannot leave! The exit has been sealed. Yeah. Hmm. I guess this place is kind of testing me. But thankfully, you're gonna see just what I can do. Just about Everything in here is weak to lightning! So, that's why I brought in Magus. And that's also why I gave him the Prism Specs. Because it increases his attack power by like 25%, he is able to one-shot literally every single thing in this entire dungeon besides the bosses with just one casting of lightning too. It is so nice. Gonna be getting tons of tech points, tons of experience points, tons of all sorts of really nice stuff in here. And another nice thing is that Magus is faster than Robo and Frog, so I don't have to worry about, like, I don't know, moving cursors around. I can just go straight to Magus's, um, Magus's tech thing and just have him cast and destroy. My favorite things to do is destroy enemies. Yeah. So because you see all the enemies right here at the very beginning, there really aren't any enemies to show inside of the dome itself, except for, well, there's like this, like, one little, I don't know, like, sensor enemy type thing. And I'll show that battle, although, just like everything else, it's going to get demolished with lightning, too. So, yeah, this is pretty much what we're going to be seeing. Thank God we have tons of ethers, because you're going to need it in here. And with that, whoa, look at all that tech points. This is one of the best grinding spots in the entire game, and Frog has now learned Frog Squash. Sweet. Who are you, by the way? Hmm. As you can see, Robo is locked inside the party. Frog, ya done. Let's bring in Isla. As far as Isla's setup is concerned, um, I, I guess we'll just take off the prison helmet that Frog had, give him Vigil. You've read Mail, that's fine, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Go ahead and throw this crap on Isla. There we go. Um, she has Power Scarf. That's whatever, Power Ring, who cares? She's fine, she's not gonna be doing anything anyway. This is all about Magus and his lit too. Ooh! open up little switches, but there's nothing that we can do there. Huh. Let's just look around. Whoa! Humans will die out from pure despair. Wow. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, we can't go back there yet, but let's just keep on exploring. What do we have over here? Oh, a full tonic. Awesome. Oh, another little thing. Whoa! And by doing that, that makes you lightning-based. And because Robo can conduct electricity, he is, I don't know, he's metal. So he can open up these various doors around here. But the way that you're supposed to find this out is by examining this computer console right here to give us data about the Genodome. Okay, so the doors. 
to open the locked doors, you charge the enemy, the energy pods bes beside them. And to do that, you have to energize at this particular pod to open up all of the various locked doors. And it's timed and it's really annoying. The conveyor belt can be reversed with the switch above it, but we can't get to that switch yet. The guard machine is the one that we just saw. We can't pass it, but if you place two guards in front of each other, they will short circuit. So we have to return the broken guard from an upstairs room. And the various Poyozo dolls here, we have to t obtain two of them in order to fight Mother Brain! Um, okay. I didn't realize we were in Super Metroid, but sure, whatever. Let's go ahead and energize her. Oh, we can't open up that thing yet. Yeah. Oh, actually, th these are the laser guards. This was the other guard thing that I was talking about that we needed to um, fight here. The laser guards are kind of annoying because they'll shoot each other and then they'll do this little self-destruct thing. So you do want to be as quick as possible with your lit too. If Isla wasn't in the party and Isla wasn't so fast, Magus would have gotten his turn quicker and we would have killed them quicker, but yeah. Okay, go over here, and what you want to do is hit the left switch, hit the right switch, open up that little thingamabopper right there, so now we can go ahead and charge that door. You're going to see a lot of backtracking in here. It's pretty annoying. Anyway, get our first Poyozo doll, and then wait for it. Yeah, eventually a speed tab will appear around here, but there it goes. A very, very hidden speed tab, but a speed tab, all the same. Open up both of those doors there, and over here, take those guys out. What's in here? Oh, an elevator. Huh. Keep that in mind for later. And here we have a dust chute. This will allow you to exit if you want to. I don't want to, because you have to go through that, like, that enemy gauntlet again, which really sucks. But if you want to grind, that's how you do it. Okay, get a lapis and an elixir. Very nice. Let's continue on our way up this conveyor belt that's going the wrong way right now. But let's go all the way up here. Oh, there's like a little robot going this way. How unusual. Ah! How scary as well. But yeah, if you do that, that's going to avoid a battle later. And then go but open up this switch right here. Um, we can't energize it yet. Because we need to reverse that conveyor belt like the little thingamajigger said. So, now let's go on this elevator. Okay, first things first, go over here and another very hidden power tab. Be sure to grab that. Oh, well, there's barely any humans as it is. I mean, this is the future. They're all pretty much dead. Yikes. After that last battle, Magus learned the black hole tech, which is it's it's essentially a... um an instant death spell, and you can use that against Son of Sun if you want to. And now he's working on Dark Matter, but he needs a ton of tech points for Dark Matter. Uh, hopefully we'll get it, we shall see. Um, I have so many regular ethers, I'm just gonna go ahead and use those right now, just so I don't waste my better ethers on Magus, so he has more access to, um, to Lit 2. Let's go down this next elevator, to get to this next portion of the first floor. Took care of them, hit that little switch so the laser guard thing goes away, go over here, and then go up. Let's see if I can't get to it. There it is. And there is a super secret hidden magic tab. Now we need to go through here and just go straight. Don't go up, just go straight. And then you can hit that switch which reverses the conveyor belt. Lucky us, we get to do one of those annoying things. Make sure that this thing is open, because now we have to energize that door. This is probably my most hated side quest, and um, there's a reason why I did it last. I cannot stand it. I don't like timed things. I don't like racing around. I don't like feeling like under pressure, if you know what I mean. Um, but, okay, perfect, we got it. What I hate even more than timed things are escort quests. Oh, there is nothing worse. 
We now have to escort this freaking get over here. This stupid robot through really, really, really narrow, get over here, narrow corridors all the way across this whole dungeon. It is just the worst. Every time I do these, like, get over here, these, um, these escort quests, it reminds me of this time. Okay, um, in EverQuest, there were some, that, that was an online game from, like, 2000. There were many classes, and one of the classes that I chose that I mastered at level 60 was the Shaman. And the Shaman class at level 35 got a pet. It was like a little pet wolf. And um, pets were notorious for horrible pathing. And um, I hardly ever summoned it except when I was in a group or anything like that. If you were in a raid, you didn't summon a pet. And uh, even later on in the game... I, um, a after I mastered the shaman and all that and got the epic weapon and everything, I made a mage. And the mage's whole big spiel is to have a pet. So, like, their pets are amazing. And I remember one time I summoned a pet inside of one of these, um, one of the dungeons from, like, from, like, where the very first continent was. I don't remember the name of the continent, though. It wasn't Kunark. That was the second continent. There was a first continent, and the dungeons weren't exactly designed all that well. And me summoning a pet... In one of these higher level dungeons, completely wiped out my entire raid party. And, uh, they didn't like me very much. <laughs> uh, there was a whole, like, no pet rule after that. Anyway, here we have Atropos, who is a female robot. I don't know how that works, considering robots are neither male nor female, but she's pink and she has a ribbon. So, of course, she's a girl. Yeah. So Atropos is saying, hey, Robo, whoa! You know, you were actually assigned to spy on humanity. And she's like, hey, join me. And, um, and we'll get rid of them together. Well, maybe Luca did tamper with them, because she did fix him. Oh, well. Yikes! Yeah, my name is Robo, not Prometheus. I did not discover fire. Oh. Okay. For boss time against Atropos XR. Point of trivia. You do not actually have to kill Atropos here. You can sit around and wait. And wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for Atropos to go through her entire... I don't know, AI script, and then Atropos will eventually self-destruct. But it takes, like, a good five minutes. Like, it takes forever to do that. So, I wouldn't bother. And the scene afterwards is completely 100% the same, whether you kill her or whether she self-destructs. It really doesn't matter. So the quickest thing to do is to just kill her. Whoa! Uh, but make sure you, you don't die either. Let's go ahead and use a, uh, a Cure Beam on myself. Um, Atropos has 6,000 HP, so it should only take about 5 or so Uzi punches, depending on how often she cures herself. Uh, let's see. So just make sure that you keep your HP above roughly 300-ish, and you should be fine. I think one more Uzi punch should do it. Yeah, once she starts using her area bombs and all that, then she has about... I think that she goes through about 10 area bombs. Then she finally self-destructs. Like, it takes a hot minute for her to self-destruct. So, just kill her. You'll be fine. Oh, And then she recovers, I guess, her own memories. So, Atropos was damaged. Maybe Atropos was actually reprogrammed by Mother. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we can plug this into our circuits. What is it? We get Atropos's ribbon. How you plug a ribbon into your circuits is beyond me. But it permanently increases robo speed by three and magic defense by ten. It is not an accessory. You do not equip it. It is just a permanent stat boost for an already super powerful party member. 
and thank you game, got a magic tab, and a mega elixir for our troubles. So let's go ahead and look at Robo's stats now. So yeah, his magic defense 74, which is comparable to just about everybody else's before. It was 64, which was terrible. His speed is now 13. Like, that's up there. It's really nice. Okay, moving right along. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. So I guess Mother there is actually working for Lavos and saying, hey, we could sustain Lavos if humanity wasn't here, if we didn't have to worry about them. What is this, like a human ranch? Ah! Oh no. Yeah, that scream? That scream wasn't Isla. That scream was the human going inside that machine and then being killed or vaporized or destroyed or whatever. Yeah, there goes another one. That's really just sad. It's really very, very sad. After that last battle, Robo learned Shock, his final ability, and now he has access to lightning-based damage, fire-based damage, shadow-based damage, and two curing techs. He is so versatile and so good. It is ridiculous. I love Robo. Unfortunately, though, he's still forced into our party. We can't take him out, so we can't um, have those tech points go towards anybody else. However, um, like I said before, I want Luca to learn Flare. So let's go ahead and stick her in the party. Let's see. She is the green... No, mm -mm, not the green dream. Let's give her the... Where is it? The magic ring. There it is. Give her the magic ring. Vigil helmet. That's fine. Everything else should be perfectly fine. Okay, let's do this. Whoa! Oh god, what are you? You're the mother brain. I don't think so. Erase my memories? Uh-oh. Come on, Robo. Oh, good for you! He's so sweet! I love Robo! Yeah... All of them except for Magus. <laughs> well, yeah, he's the most emotional of them all, actually. He's actually become a pretty damn human for boss time! He gets Mother Brain and the displays. If you wanted to bring Isla in here, you could. You could steal elixirs from the displays, and Mother Brain herself, I believe, has a blue mail that you could grab if you care about that. I don't, so don't worry about it. And uh, let's just wait for it real fast with Luca. Let's see if I can't get this going on. Hypnowave actually works on the um, on the uh, displays there. So we can put them to sleep and then they won't bother us. So let's just... God, we just gotta wait for it. Hopefully it actually works. Hey, we got all three of them to sleep. Awesome. So now whenever they're asleep... They're not really going to do anything to us, so hopefully we can just dark bomb the mother brain. Um, let's see, do that, and let's wait for Luca's slow ass to get some turns in as well. Okay, the middle one, gone, that's fine. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to be using their W bomb. This bomb attack is so ridiculous, so overpowered, I love it. Like, 4,000 damage! We, like, pretty much one-shot Mother Brain there. Got our 40 tech points for Flare! Great! Yeah, learning all sorts of stuff through here. Hey, and we got the Terra Arm and the Crisis Arm. Best weapons in the game for Robo. Oh, but we did get so much plot development for him. I love it. If you try to go back inside the Genodome, though... All the functions are down. You cannot re-enter. Let's look at the various things. Terra Arm. This is the highest attack power arm for Robo. Um, however, the Crisis Arm. This thing is redonkulous. So the description is complete. 
horse shit. It, that's not what it does. Basically, the attack changes based upon the ones digit of Robo's HP. If, like, let's say that Robo has 900 HP, the ones digit would be a zero, and his attack power would be crap. Let's say that Robo has 999 HP, though. The ones digit would be a nine, and Robo's HP would be through the frickin' roof. So what you want to do is you can give him a gold earring, boom! He always has a nine in his ones digit as long as he is at maximum HP. So crisis arm, gold earring, Robo is a house! So nice. Anyway, with that, we are done with all of the character-specific side quests. So now all we have left to do is kick Specchio's ass and tackle the Black Omen. And we're going to be doing both of those things next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.